Good morning. Hello. Hello, hello. Um, I think we are live. All right, so I'm just bringing the chat. Um, let me know, guys, if you can hear me all right and if you can see me. Um, cool. All right. Hey, Dan, Keith. Hey, Mohisin. Nicola from Serbia, how are you doing? Great to have you guys here. Um, awesome. All right. So I'm not feeling 100% today. <laughs> so I might have to wrap it up a little bit earlier, but we'll see how we go. Um, the idea is to complete this character or just um, wrapping it up with some details and maybe uh, do a bit more of the poly painting just to refine some of these, you know, uh, work in progress poly paint that, that we made. Uh, but I think it's it's coming along nicely. Um, yeah, that's that's the idea. Maybe and I don't know. We'll see what what we can add uh, in terms of like details to the to the body and all of that. But it is almost there. It's just uh, about refining it to to complete it and and that's it. <laughs> hey, comics legend, how you doing? Um, yeah. So and aside from this, I have a couple of cool announcements to to make today. Um, maybe some of you have seen that the extra mile course is open, so it will be open for enrollment all this week. Um, but I'll talk about that in in just a bit. So let's go ahead and start with. I was gonna say let's start with the with the head and detailing the head, but I reckon we can just add. Um, I, I wanted to add kind of like those twirly things that um, the popkins have. Um, so I, I, I might add some of those things and some of those flicks around the, the body as, a, as an extra set of sub, sub tools, just to show you something else as well, um, a new set of maybe techniques. And yeah, and then we can just go back to the head and um, hopefully I can show you some, some techniques of building a custom brush, a simple custom brush to, to detail that. All right, so. What I'm going to do is append a plane into solo mode. And this should be pretty simple, but let's go ahead and simplify it even more. And I'm going to go to the geometry palette and I'm going to reconstruct this geometry. Um, something, yeah, I reckon something like that would be fine. And I mean, there, there's different ways to go about it. Um, we can create a, we can create a, a custom, a custom brush or a custom um, curve brush to do those kind of flicks. But I want to keep it very simple, like some sort of leaves or, or something coming from the arms or something like that. Um, hopefully, it will make sense when I when I show it. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and scale this like that, and I'm gonna turn this into a an insert brush later on, rather than a than a curve brush. So I reckon something like this would be fine. Maybe a bit longer or not. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to bring in the C modeler. I'm going to right click in the one of the edges. I want to click insert and I want to select multiple edge loops rather than a single one. And that allows me to click and drag. Whoops, um, I have subdivision levels, so let's delete higher. Let's do it again. Click and drag, and about there. And I can, once I've done the first one, Sirius will remember the previous action, so I can just click and do that. And let's go ahead and remove the creasing. So under the geometry palette, you can go to crease, and I'm going to click on, on crease all, so we don't have any creasing. And also, let's just do a quick polygroup for everything. Uh, so the only reason I did that is just to get some even poly polygons. So to distribute the, the topology a little bit better. Um, title is wrong again. <laughs> Shane, have you changed? Um, yeah, so um, I'm not doing, uh, I, I've changed, I'm not doing stylized character anymore. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna bring in the gizmo, click on the cog icon, and I'm gonna go to taper. And this is the one or one of the things that is going to allow me um, 
I, actually, before I do that, uh, I was gonna say that's the only thing that allows me to. So, or one of the things that allows me to give it a, a bit of shape, like a like a leaf. Uh, but I think before I do that, what I'll do is give it a bit more shape. So, I'm just gonna rotate it like this. Um, perspectives off, and I'm gonna go ahead and rotate. Let's see what what would be the best way to do it. I think I'm just gonna mask these sides, invert the mask, bring in the gizmo and then push this down a little bit and then do the same thing just with the borders so essentially just masking and pushing things like that so it just gives me that sort of like a like a hut <laughs> or the roof or of a hut um, shape and then we can bring in the gizmo go to taper and I'm just gonna push this down and I want to reduce the, the effect of the taper, something like that. And maybe I'll do the same thing here for the for the back. Okay. And I'm going to click OK or accept. And I'm also going to bring in the soft deformer so that I can increase the, the size here in the in the middle. So uh, the way that the soft deformer is, uh, I've, I've used this before in the previous streams as well. Uh, basically, you can set up like a lattice. So actually, let's increase that lattice like so and reduce that one. So you have these points that you can move around. You can click and drag and then deform it like so. Uh, so what I'll do is clear the mask and then I'm going to just mask the top and bottom. So anything that has the, the white dots are points that you can move. And with the gizmo, I'm just going to scale it like that. Maybe maybe too much just a bit okay I think that should be okay click accept so we're getting there with the with this sort of like leaf shape um, the final thing I want to do is create that sort of flick effect and I'm gonna do the bend or I'm gonna use the bend arc uh, you know what instead of the bend arc let's use the bend curve right and this is something else that I've used in the past uh, what I'll do is just set the direction Hang on. direction um, and then add a couple more points I think that would be okay I want to click and start rotating those things around so that's sort of what I'm um, after really the rest could be just use, you know, using the move tool and that's it. Uh, so let's enable double, turn off polyframe. So that's kind of like the, the idea, right? Like a simple sort of like flick of a, um, of a leaf. Uh, but I, I want to create an insert brush for this. So I'm going to go to the brush palette, click on insert mesh, new. Uh, so I can just basically do this now. Perfect. Um, actually, let's just push this down slightly so that we can embed it a, li a little bit more. Mm, not that much. All right. So now we have created a new custom brush, a leaf custom brush. I can turn this off now and I can go ahead and get out of solo mode. We can go to the body. And the body right now, we just have a, a pretty simple you know, pretty simple um, low res mesh, uh, semi low res mesh really, that came from the C spheres that we used to build up the, the base, right? And that's done, uh, I think we did that in the last stream. Um, so we don't have any subdivision levels or anything, so we can easily just apply it um, and add these, these flicks on this, um, on this guy. Uh, so what I'll do is enable, yeah, I have symmetry enable, and I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that. Maybe we can have uh, everything else visible. Right, so something like this, and I'm just gonna start pushing things like so. And obviously when you add an insert brush or when you insert anything in ZBrush, um, it's going to automatically be masked out. The rest is gonna be masked out. So this is great to, to do these sort of effects because you can just drag and then rearrange the, the position on, on all of that.
So I, I don't know how this would be called or it's kind of like the splitting at the end. We can also change the the size a little bit just to variate things around. Made like some of them a bit longer. And again, this is just a, a quick placement for these things, but we will we will tweak them in, in just a second. I'm gonna make this a bit thicker and shorter. And another thing you can do if you don't wanna, you know, click and drag and place them all the time, and if you wanna maintain, let's say, the, the size of this one that I just added, you can just hold control and drag, and that would obviously duplicate the the thing that you don't have um, mask or the unmask areas, right? So just duplicated that one, uh, which is currently the unmask one. If I can, I mean, if I want to do it again, I can just hold control and, and do it. But I think just a, a little bit of that, maybe. Let's go ahead and exaggerate this and add a few more of these here. And this is another thing that, um, so um, the reason I did the polypane beforehand, or that I have a little bit of polypane on the body, um, is, is just to get an idea, a feel of how this guy might look at the end, but also working with polygroup or polypane, sorry, and having a, a, a working polypane, um, it, is, it is a great idea, especially to just have the the ability to see the contrast between this type of things that I'm doing and what's what's already been placed in a way. So polypin is not just to you know texture your characters or whatever you're doing in ZBrush. They could be also uh, or it could be also a great tool to to be able to discern between what you're placing and the new things um, and just have a, a reference for yourself of what um, what you're doing. So hopefully you see what I'm going out with this, um, with these things, or what I'm trying to achieve. And if you have any questions about this, by all means, drop it in the in the chat. All right, I'm gonna clear that mask. See how everything is going from the distance. I think it's looking alright. I'm, I'm just gonna add a few of these, maybe here. Not sure if that if that works. Maybe not. But I can do the same thing here around the legs. Maybe I think they they work fine as it is. I think I just wanted to add a, a few more of um you know breaking apart the the silhouette and the the shape of the character. So if I enable my my thumbnail, right? That's really what I wanted to do. So you see um, here on the left hand side, um, it's a little bit hard to see with the chat, but let me see if I turn that off for a second. That's better. So really, if I go ahead and isolate just these things, hang on, and let's go ahead and split that. Right, so uh, if, you, if you pay attention to the silhouette here on the left hand side, if I turn on and off the those kind of like flicks that I added, basically what I'm trying to uh, achieve with that is breaking apart that silhouette so that they aren't the the arms don't they don't look just like sticks essentially, um, and that helps with the you know guiding a little bit the the viewer side towards the head, which is the important part of the character, or like what the expression is and all of that. So they're kind of like in a way within if you treat your character as a composition, they're in a way it's kind of like guiding. The, the viewer's attention to to the head in a way. Um, all right, so I have these now in a separate subtool, right? And what I can do is let's subdivide this. Oops, before I do that, uh, let's go ahead and actually test a few things with dynamic subdivision. I want to turn off 
thumbnail and bring back the chat so again if you have any questions put them in there uh, when you create the IMM brush does it remember the depth settings the depth settings are created so the depth settings of this this thumbnail here is it will come into play after you create the IMM so definitely and you can have multiple meshes within the IMM brush and each one of those objects that you have in there will have a different depth like you can change that independently so it's that's pretty cool so I'm going to use the dynamic subdivision to soften this out um, and the reason I do dynamic instead of just the divide version is because the dynamic allows me to change things like you know we can do we can enable Q grid and be able to see kind of like a sharper version of that line that um, we didn't define as a as a sharper line uh, which you, you could have done as well within the the insert brush right so within the insert brush you can define lines or, or not lines loops that are um, creased so when you add that into whatever mesh you're using uh, it will remain that that crease edge will remain but in this case I left it out so I can just use this Q grid maybe Q grid of one and we can play with this chamfer or beveling and constant and change that sort of coverage a little bit let's see what the chamfer does I think bevel is fine. All I really want is to maintain the, the original sort of thickness. So I think that's achieved just by playing with this slider with the coverage. And and really what it's doing, um, you cannot see it here, but once I accept this, uh, what Sibrush is doing is, is subdividing the mesh, right? Like if I don't use any Q grid or anything, it's just subdividing the mesh. But when you start playing with the bevel, the constant, the coverage, and all of that, um, Zbrush is just taking whatever subdivision you will be adding, and it's sort of like moving the the new loops around so that uh, it sort of like sharpens certain things. Uh, let me just show you. So if I click and apply this, you see that these these edges are or these loops they're not consistent in a way. So let me go back and show you that. So if I turn off Q Grid. And I click apply, right? And let's turn this on and off. You see that the the arrangement of the loops and the subdivision is pretty consistent, right? It's just subdividing the polygons that we already had. But if I undo that again, this uh, Q grid thing and playing around with the coverage, what it does is just being able to change the the arrangement of those uh, those loops that will be subdivided. So that's why it gives that that effect. So let's play with the coverage again. I'm not entirely sure about the, the look of this, so I might just go manually and and do the sharpen. Uh, so yeah, let's do that just to do it, do it properly. So one thing we can do is go to the crease panel um, and because all of these ones are just a simple polygroup, if I click on crease all or sorry crease uh, sorry crease polygroups or PG, that will create a crease around the border between different polygroups. So because this is a single polygroup, it will have a sharper edge all around. So you see that that change as soon as I clicked on that. Um, so now I can go ahead and turn on dynamic without the Q grid, just a normal subdivision. And we maintain that sort of um, all around volume, right? So it's just subdividing that. Uh, the other thing I want is potentially have a sharper edge towards the, the center. So that one, it's a little bit more tricky or not tricky, but you cannot, you cannot just create a, a line or a or an edge just right in the middle for uh, using these tools. You could have done it beforehand. So for example, if, they, if when you're creating the, the insert mesh, you separate or, or split the in half of the two polygroups, then that's something you can do. In this case, I'm just gonna use the C modeler. I'm gonna right click on an edge and I'm gonna click on crease, sorry, not delete, crease, um, edge loop complete. I'm gonna right click on a face as well and I say do nothing 
and just in case I'm going to click on a point and do nothing. So those settings are really handy so that if I accidentally click on a you know on a key on a polygon, Sirius is not going to do any of the settings that I have here. Um cool. Sergio, hi Sergio. How are you doing? Sergio Salgado. Huh. I used to have um uh, back in the day when I was in in I think primary school or something, I had a friend called Sergio Salgado. Um I'm gonna turn off symmetry as well. Oh, that's another thing, right? Uh, this tool wouldn't work with the symmetry, so something we can do is hold control. Hang on. No, it should work with symmetry. Okay. I think I just um, I left the, the subdivision that I applied before, so let's just delete higher. Let's try it again. Yeah, so it does work with symmetry. Uh, so I just deleted those, those things. I'm going to go ahead and click on, or keep clicking. It's not symmetrical for some reason. So let's just go ahead and hold Control and Shift, invert that selection without symmetry, delete hidden, and I'm just going to concentrate on the other side. And that that will probably be easier. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna. Just go through this, clicking on the center line just to, to sharpen that. And because we don't have a few, I mean, we have a few of those, <laughs> um, it should be a pretty easy thing to do. And I just saw like a little one that we probably didn't, like I didn't see it. So I'm going to hide that one. And I'm going to delete hidden. All right, cool. So now we have that center line that is sharper. Um, we can go ahead and let's wait until Sirius does that. I can click on dynamic and now we maintain that sort of sharper line. Now, this is a cool trick, something that you can do as well. Um, if you want to, um, basically, if you want to have like a very sharp line, like a super stylized type of thing, this is fine. If you want to soften it a little bit, what I do is Let's say that the subdivision that I'm setting up here in the, in the dynamic palette is set to maybe maybe two is fine, right? So what I'll do, and I'm going to leave the poly frame on, I'm going to apply that subdivision, right? So now I have three subdivision levels. And this is what I get, exactly what I saw or what I had before in dynamic, but now it's in the, the usual subdivision level. So the next thing I want, I want to do basically is Go to the creasing tab and I'm going to get closer here so you can see what it happens. I'm going to uncrease all. So that's going to get rid of any sharper line that I have. And I'm just going to simply, now I can turn this off. I'm going to click on divide and maybe another time, right? So now basically Sirius just subdivides these, these flicks in, in the normal subdivision approach without any, any sharper line. Um, I actually like the the sharpen the, or the sharpest line that I had before. So I'm gonna, um, in fact, I'm, before I apply the subdivision level, I'm just gonna keep it as dynamic, just because that will save us, um, you know, some polygons. And let's get out of solo mode, and let's click on mirror and well. Whoops, turn off local symmetry, mirror and well. Now we have those flicks back again that have the sharper lines and, and all of that. So that's that's working good. Hey, Alex. Uh, all right, so I'm going to bring in a standard brush. I'm going to turn that into a painting brush. Select some of the color here closer to the arm. And with the symmetry enabled, I'm just going to go ahead and paint those flicks. And just by doing that, we can sort of integrate these things a lot more, right? Um, in fact, let's turn off the poly paint for this, and 
something I mentioned before is that once you place this, you still have you know the chance to go ahead and, and tweak the placement. So I'm gonna select the move topological with accurate curve symmetry is enabled, and this is the type of things that you can go ahead and and tweak, right? So I'm gonna push in kind of like with the with the starting point. And that also allows me to, you know, variate things a bit so that it's not perfect. Feels more organic. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I think that's that looks a little bit better. Um, the fact that we're using the move topological brush, it's um, it's just because in this case that I have some almost overlapping meshes, it's going to be easier to just you know select individual pieces. Uh, but if you want, you can also use the the move the normal move brush, and if that makes it easier, of course, go for it. Uh, but the, the other kind of like feature that I'm using at the moment is the um, the accu curve, and the accu curve allows you to have that sort of pointy movement. So like if I want to flick this thing back with the accu curve, it's pretty easy. If I don't have the accu curve, it's gonna look really really weird. Uh, but I don't want to do that. Just want to show you that it's there in case you wanted to. I feel like these ones, these tiny ones, need to be extended a bit more. All right, I think I think that's cool. All right, let's go ahead and turn back on the polypaint. And you'll see it like it looks a lot more interesting. I think it it feels more like a like an organic type of creature character. Um let's see. All right, how are we doing with time? Um I probably want to add a few more things to the body. Um, so I was just thinking kind of like a like a buckle like or something to to break that line between the the top of the body or like the torso and the and the legs uh, but something organic like something that we can do with again some sort of like twirly things or I don't know uh, we'll we'll have a look at that and then we we move into the to the face just to to finalize it and, and wrap it up um, with some more interesting things because let's say this part here, you know it's it's fine but it just looks too almost like too perfect so i want to you know go ahead and tweak this a, a lot more maybe um add a lot more variation between some of these ridges and, and all of that so that's that will be the next step and obviously add some details to the face as well so let's do um let's do what i just mentioned the, the breaking apart that that area for the silhouette as well so um i don't know what we what can we do to do some sort of I'm um, just thinking what sort of asset we can add I don't know if you guys have any suggestions for that I think we just you know what I'm gonna just use the good old curve tube brush I think it should be fine Right, so this is the, the curve brush. I'm gonna use a very small brush size, maybe not that small. Mm, yeah, something like that. And what I'll do is change some of the settings of this brush. So by default, the curve to brush, when you click and drag and you do this, is going to have a single, a single, it's gonna pick up a single click depth in a way. So what that means is that whatever you click, Siri is going to remember that depth and it's going to maintain that depth. So if I click somewhere around here and I do this, right, um, you'll see that there is some intersection in this area and that is because the depth is 
is kept. So if I go through this line, you see it's almost like a perfect line, like in a plane, uh, because again, Sirius is using a single point of that depth. So it's not uh, conforming to the body. So I'm gonna undo that. And if I go to the picker palette here, there is an option here under the depth to change from 1C, which is basically what I just said, um, a single point or a single, it's gonna pick up the, the depth only once or continuously. Continuously is going to um, analyze continuously like the entire volume as you move around. So you can do these type of things. And because Sirius is analyzing the depth of the model is attaching the, well, in this case, the tube around the, the shape. Right, so that's a pretty cool thing. Um, yeah, so another thing I want probably, uh, maybe we can do that after. So I want to start here at the back. I'm going to go into solo mode as well. I'm going to start here at the back and do something like that. Uh, you can extend the, um, you know, the curve and, and all of that. I'm going to measure it. So you can extend it by simply hovering over the, the curve before you accept it. And then you see it sort of like snaps that red line and that, al that allows you to extend it. And you don't have to extend it from the end of the curve, which is great. Um, you can just extend it from here, for example. You see that red line appears at any point. So if I do that, it's just gonna, well, in this case, it should allow me to do this type of thing, but I think I accept it. Let, let me just do it again. Right. Um, for some reason it's not. Let me just do it again. Okay, it's not snapping here. That's fine. Um, what I'll do is go to the stroke palette, chuck that in the right hand side, and I'm gonna log the uh, the start, not the end. No, sorry, the start. Yeah, let's do the start, and I'm gonna extend this. So, all right. So something like that. Um, if you wanna smooth the the curve, I wanna reduce the intensity of my shift brush. So holding shift, right click, and that will change the intensity of that smooth brush. If you click on the curve, and without letting go of the click, you you hold the shift key, you can actually smooth that curve. Right, so I'm just gonna do that, just move that a little bit. Right, and push that like so, and I think that is that is fine as a, as a starting point. Um, maybe it's a little bit too thick. Anyway, um, this is just the first one, so I just wanna show you something else. Let me see what's happening here in the chat. Hey, Brecky, good to have you here. Yeah, we're just uh, wrapping up the the pumping, pumpkin jack inspired type of character. Um, cool, so all right, um, I'm gonna let you guys know now that I can see there's, there's a few more people here. Um, the, the couple of things that I wanted to, to talk about, you know, before we, we continue with this character, um, or the, the, the announcement that I had is that the extra mile course is open now for enrollment. So if you guys, uh, or you're, if you're interested in these type of things, like going, uh, in a lot more depth and through the rest of the, of the workflow in terms of other software rendering, compositing and all of that, that's what it's covered in the extra mile course and it's now open for enrollment and it's, um, it is for limited time. And yeah, the reason I, I wanted to, to mention it today is because this, uh, this enrollment opportunity for the extra mile is, is essentially the last, the last time that the, the price is going to remain at the, you know, at, at the price that it has been for the past, um, year really. And because we constantly add like new updates, new things, uh, we catch up regularly online and stuff like that. Um, the course has also been growing and it requires maybe more time of my, um, yeah, more of my time really. So the, the price is gonna go up for the next, um, the next enrollment. So if you're keen, um, I'll just share this 
basically this is the the website um actually brecky that is here and recommending the the extra mile uh this is one of his work actually in the extra mile you can sort of see it there uh that's brecky uh yeah so th these are some of the the students work which are fantastic uh you can just go to the three concept artist and click on this join us today and I will be there. If you're part of my email list, you should have also received an invitation, but I just want to make sure that uh, you guys are aware of it. Um, because yeah, I wouldn't want you to miss that, this chance uh, to join us. It's um, it's super cool. Uh, we're working on some really cool stuff uh, that are also coming up. And another thing about this update, uh, about this enrollment is that there is a new update for uh, rendering. So seven new lessons on rendering with uh, Blender Cycles, Blender Eve, uh, Maverick render and Adobe Dimension, so that's that's a pretty cool thing. So um, anyway, I'll, I'll I'll leave it there, and hopefully you guys, if you're interested, um, you are welcome to join. The other thing that I wanted to say or um, announce is that hopefully you guys have seen and there is a, a the nightbot here in the the chat that mentioned it, and that's kind of like what I when I remembered it. Um, the the sculpt of the sculpt of is now public. Um, so the silver sculpt of is the you know the really intense and really cool sort of like challenge to create something from scratch in ZBrush um, within three hours, and that happens during the the silver summit. And because this year the the whole thing is online, um, it is open for public registration. So basically anyone can register and participate in the in the live sculptor, which is awesome. So I haven't done that in the past myself, like in, in, not live, but or not uh, online, but in um, in the actual normal workshop campuses. Um, it was like a, a fantastic experience for me. And based on, on, on what I learned, um, I didn't win. I came in, I think I came in second, <laughs> but I, it was a really cool experience and being able to, to share with other artists. So what I thought I could do is share a little bit of that and share some tips if you want to participate. So I'm planning a, a free webinar type of thing, um, like a Zoom webinar that um, if you're interested, I, you know, I will send it an, I'll send in an email, but I'll put it in the social media as well. Uh, if you want to join, the idea is to, to walk you through some of the, the tips and planning or what you can do to improve like uh, in terms of speed uh, and all of that, if you want to participate for the sculptor, so in a way giving you some some little tick, uh, trip tips and tricks for the speed sculpting and participating in that sculptor that uh, Silver, the Silver Summit is doing. So yeah, uh, I will. Uh, I just wanted to mention that, and I will send a, an invite as well. So if you're part of the email list, uh, uh, you'll get it in there. Uh, but yeah, you can just join me in that webinar and hopefully um, you know get some tips and. I'll encourage everyone to participate in that uh, sculptor because it's now open for, for everyone. And uh, there's some awesome prizes as well, I'm sure. Uh, cool. So that is it. Let's go ahead and continue with this. So now that I have placed these, these curve tubes, I haven't actually accepted. So you can see still the curve there. Um, one of the things that I like to do is, let's say, add more on top of these ones or add more. Um, more of this curvature around. So we can click on, let's see, where is it? Curve functions here. I'm gonna click on a snapshot or the uh, the number five in your keyboard. So if I click snapshot, see what it, what it does is, it's gonna take this curve, um, drop it in there, but it's going to maintain the same uh, the same original curve. So like when I can, when I move this, you'll see the original one is, like the snapshot of the original is there but I still have this additional one um, with the same length and everything. Let's go into solo mode again. That allows me to, you know, this, do this type of thing. So this is a great way to add a bit more complexity. And I'm gonna reduce the brush size, which in turn is gonna reduce the thickness of this. All right. So I'm just tweaking this, um, the shape of it. Uh, we can go ahead and tweak this even more later on. 
Uh, but that's one way to do it that I think is pretty pretty handy. And just to add a, one more and to reiterate the process again, snapshot, it was going to maintain that, maybe reduce the thickness even more to again, variate the stuff. Um, and I'm just gonna add something like that. Uh, the reason that everything sort of disappears when I'm tweaking things is because I have the solo mode enabled. But maybe this is easier to, to see what I'm doing. Right. So that's roughly what I wanted to do. Maybe we do, we do need kind of like a buckle. Um, We'll see. We'll see what we can do to to make it cool. Uh, I'm gonna click outside, and I'm gonna hold Control, click and drag to remove that mask. And now that we have this, we can use the move topological, and we can just um, do some subtle notches here. Actually, let's turn off the Aki curve, so that we can maintain a bit more of that volume. And with a larger brush, we can start tweaking the, the placement of all of this. And yeah, basically connect this a little bit better so that it feels it feels more realistic in a way. Although this is pretty, you know, <laughs> not, not really realistic. Um, I'm gonna push this one in and then this one out. I think that would work. And this is kind of like the first pass, right? Just um, tweaking the placement of all, all of these. You could have potentially do this as a single, as a single brush, really, to to get all that um, all this effect in a single brush. But uh, I I think in this case it's just easier to do it like this manually, and it, you have a lot more control, to be honest. Uh, but anyway, this is just a starting point, and I know like I'm pushing things maybe too much or like sticking them out like maybe too much but it, it's all it's all good um, I'll show you what we can do in a second Th this pass or this first thing that I'm doing is just really trying to to make sure that everything is connected in a way or that it just feels more natural and I have a feeling that things are not symmetrical for some reason. So I'm just gonna mirror and mirror and weld uh, before I do that actually. Let me push that so that it doesn't get welded there. And this one actually wanna weld it. So let's mirror and weld now. Let's go into solo mode. <laughs> ah, whoops. Should've not done that. Let me undo that before I mirrored it, I forgot that I had it in like as part of the character. So uh, I still have the the mask, I think. Hang on. Let me isolate that and a split hidden. All right. So now I have this in a separate mesh um, and I've been working without symmetry. So that, that was the, the issue really. Okay, so let's mirror and mirror and weld. And there's a tiny bit of polygon there, I don't know why. So I'm gonna re delete that, uh, delete hidden. All right. Enable symmetry, oops. We can just work like so. All righty. I think we missed something here. Isn't this one supposed to be on top of this area? Um, I 
there we go. Don't know what happened there. I'm gonna go into solo mode, it's gonna be a lot easier. <laughs> um, and you see that I'm deforming the, the, you know, the thickness of it. So the, the, the thickness is not consistent anymore, but that's kind of like what I wanted. If you wanna maintain consistency across the, you know, maintain this thickness all around, uh, what you can do is use the the technique with the um, with the C spheres, and that would definitely be a lot easier to control in terms of that uh, that thickness if you want to maintain that. But I wanna I want something a lot more organic like this. So um, it's fine to to variate that sort of thickness. I'm gonna use the smooth brush just to smooth out the the end bits of this. So, and we can extend a few of these. All right. Hey, Peter, how you doing? Can you vary the thickness of one curve? Um, so you can do it based on what I've been doing just tweaking things. If you wanna um, variate the thickness based on the curve itself, yeah, you can totally do that. Um, let me show you, it's pretty easy. So this is my curve. Let's do a smaller brush size. So this is the curve. If you mean like variating that thickness throughout the curve, basically like tapering and all of that, uh, you can do that from the modifiers in the stroke palette, go down to the modifiers or curve modifiers, and you can enable things like the size. So enabling the size, it basically enables this uh, this curve falloff. So the left hand side is the root, which means this point, and the right hand side is the, the tip, which is this point. So if I click to update once I enable size, Siri is gonna give me this. So the, the beginning point is gonna be pretty narrow, like this one, uh, but I can flip this, for example, and update, and now I have like a taper sort of effect. Um, this is actually not too bad. Let's undo that. You know, we can do something like this. As a, you know, as an extra cool little thing. <laughs> um, maybe with a smaller brush size. Right? And maybe you don't want to have like the, the end point to be so small, so you can push it up like so, click and update, and it will update. Uh, maybe you can, you know, you can add more multiple points, so could be like this. So it starts a little bit thinner, then goes thicker, and then back to thin. So that, yeah, that's a pretty easy way to do that. I kind of like that thing, so <laughs> I'm just gonna accept that, bring in my gizmo, and just place it a bit better, or in a place that makes a more sense, I don't know. And then do the same thing. Oops. Hold control, click and drag. Just place this somewhere here. I wasn't planning on doing this one, but it's kind of cool. We'll see how we go. It might, I, you know, it's one of those things that it might, you know, it just looks like a um, like a good idea at this point, but maybe it's not. It's gonna change the, the size, oh sorry, the, the side, so that it breaks that symmetry a little bit. So it's the same asset, but just changing the side, the side of it just changes the, the look of, of it. So yeah, it might be something cool or might not, might change it later. I'm gonna clear that mask. So that's roughly what I wanted. Um, what I'll do is now use the move brush with AccuCurve. So the normal move brush, that's the one that allows, that allows us to, to grab everything, not just um, individual pieces of mesh and push this closer to the body. So I use the, 
um, the move topological to let me select pieces individually or like these these things individually first uh, to make sure that they sort of work together. Uh, but now with the with the normal move brush, I can just go ahead and place things a bit better or closer to the body. And again, I'm I'm not trying to maintain that thickness. In fact, I want to variate variate the whole thing, just flattening things and stuff like that. All right, I'm going to turn off uh, symmetry now. Just going to play around with this. Oh, let me undo that. Do it with the with the move topological. And this is just to add a bit of, you know, asymmetry to this. Might want to spend a, a bit more time, but I think that works. And yeah, it just sort of breaks apart that symmetry a bit more. All right, so we got that. Um, for the buckle, we can just do um, maybe maybe like a, a simplified version of that um, that this that skull of like the jack skull thing. Uh, the, I'm talking about the the nightmare before Christmas. So let's append a quick sphere. Let's do a quick save as well. And let's go to solo mode. And let's use the move brush. Okay, so with this sphere, I'm just gonna use the Gizmo 3D to give it a quick shape. Um, we can use the soft deformer. I, 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 be, I mean, you can use anything really, or just the move brush. Uh, the soft deformer is something that I've been getting, um, you know, a, a lot more use than than what I thought for this type of thing, so let's just do that. That's roughly the shape, right? And maybe the back of the head is not as straight. Anyway, this is gonna be a lot flatter, but it's gonna be the buckle. <laughs> so in fact, let's just go ahead and accept this and just scale this, whoops in the z-axis a lot more like that and let's enable um, let's use actually the clay brush I'm gonna dynamesh this right it's a dynamesh object and I'm gonna enable back face masking just in case and with this I'm just gonna add with symmetry I'm just gonna add the the eyes I'm gonna do this very quickly and let me see um, if there is any any questions in the chat, feel free to put them in there. Hey, Paolo, can you talk a bit more about what the extra mile course is about? Um, sure. Like every everything that you really need to know, it's in, in that in the website. Um, I covered, or I yeah, everything is in there. But the extra mile is just um, it's just a course that I've you know something that I've been working on for for a while and. Um, I released that a year ago, and it's been fantastic. Like seeing the the work and everything that the the students have been doing, and how much they have progressed is is just fantastic. But it's essentially um, it's not a ZBrush core, uh, a ZBrush course. It does involve ZBrush because that's one of the the primary tools that I use, um, you know, in my in my workflow. Um, hang on, this looks kind of like a funny. I don't wanna. I don't want to make it necessarily smile. <laughs> Let me do that again. I'm going to go for more of a straight line. There we go. Um, so yeah, it does involve ZBrush. It's definitely part of it. Um, we use it quite a bit. But the, the whole idea is just to walk you through my personal workflow on how to create um, 
you know, concepts, characters, uh, like a Polish illustration, that sort of thing. So it is, yeah, it is essentially that, just giving giving you uh, a systematic approach to to the whole thing. So in a way, it's um, it's slightly different from probably some other courses that you might have seen online, uh, in the sense that what I what I teach is something. It, it's not just like let's do this step by step. As in, it, it is a step by step, but it's not like uh, th let's say if I'm working on this character, I teach you how to you know use the clay brush to push this these areas like like so and that would create sort of like the eyebrow or whatever and then use the move brush to adjust it and that's it because at the end of that of what I just mentioned as, a, as an example um, you will I mean you have an exposure to the tools but you will be able to just replicate a very similar thing so with the extra mile course the aim when I was building it um, was to concentrate on workflows and the overall pipeline to give the students the kind of like the chance to build whatever they want really so if you look at the um at the course like the results of the, the students and what they've been creating um none of them have actually created the character that i use as a demo so the character that i use as a demo is um it's just kind of like an alien creature type of thing uh like an intergalactic type of creature <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's it's again it's focusing on the um, on the workflows, not on the on the actual product of the character that at the end I end up with. If that makes any sense. Um, but again, it's just more more than a simple step by step course in a way. Um, we focus on on the workflows, and we have a super cool community where everyone sort of like gives you feedback, share progress, um, you know, and it's a, it's a great tool to, you know, keep you both things, like keep you motivated as well as um, hold you accountable to what you're doing. Because if you post something, say, oh, I'm working on this, I need some feedback and someone gives you feedback and, and you say, oh yeah, I'm gonna change that, then you actually, you better change it basically. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I quite I quite like the, the turn that it, I mean it has sort of like uh, grown really really um, really quickly and for the better um, just it has expanded a lot in terms of what the what the students are doing with it um, they set up like their own discord channel um, you know it, it's also a place to do connecting <laughs> right a little bit of connecting um, let me just talk a little bit about what I'm doing right now when I use the damp sander brush and add some gaps here for the teeth and maybe increase the resolution as well uh, but yeah the community is fantastic you like when you once you join you get access to to all of that as well um, and again it's it's kind of like um I don't know, like a, like a way to connect with other people, but also to hold yourself accountable, to get feedback. And the feedback that you get uh, is, you know, it's there are critiques basically that will help you grow in a way. And I'm also obviously part of the, the community and that's how I can sort of like give you feedback as well. And we do sort of paint overs. We, uh, we catch up regularly as well, do, you know, Q and A's or uh, in the past we've done as well, some um, artwork breakdown so I remember one of the ones that we did um, ages ago was, I think it was the the breakdown of the Mandalorian sort of concept that I that I have online, um, and that you know that that was done with Gravity Sketch, you know other tools and ZBrush as well. Um, so you know the students wanted to see how that was built, and I showed them how it was created. So those type of things are, are pretty cool to you know to actually share uh, but like I said what you get are like real critiques about your work so instead of saying oh that's really cool um, or oh, that doesn't that doesn't do anything for me that doesn't I don't like it um, you get things that are more actionable in a way more practical like saying oh have, pay attention to the deltoid um, is the forming wheel with with the arm or um, the contrast of the eyes is not you know it's not giving you don't have enough contrast so the the iris is being missed or, or whatever 
So they're like actual things that you can you can tweak and that will help you grow as an as an artist, I think. Um, but anyway, that's kind of like the the point of difference we have of that very cool community. Everyone is super nice. Um, you know, it's 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 a great place to to get feedback and and to share the work and the in progress that you're doing with the course and the people that are, are in the the community as well. They're doing the same course or at, at least or they've done it already, uh, so they they know what you what you're going through if you're studying and they will give you all the help you need so it's a it's a pretty cool stuff um, that we got going there so it's not just the course it's not just the the content itself and like i said we do regular catch-ups and all of that um all right i'm gonna i think that looks all right looks a, a bit funny but just gonna exaggerate some things because it looks a bit boring. Uh, let me see. Uh, how often do you teach the course? No, so the the course itself, like the core of the the core content of the course, is um, is pre-recorded. So that's that's what allows you to, you know. Um, but that's what allows the course to be self-paced essentially so you do it at your own pace at your own time uh, and all of that the the live sessions are more like the student feedback or q a so we we variate those things so sometimes uh, for example when the zbrush 2021 came out we did a q a session about about that specifically just showing some of the tools of zbrush and you know and you could ask questions and like you get answers there, that sort of thing. But the but the actual content is is pre recorded. It's just the all the other extras and stuff that um that's what keeps growing. And once you're in the the course, like you, it's just a lifetime access anyway. So you get access to to all the the new stuff, like the the one that I just did for for this release, which is a rendering update. All right. <laughs> I spend way too much time on this on this guy so I'm just going to use the the H polish to flatten it a bit just to stylize it and, and make sure that it's not you know I want to make it uh, I don't know it could be metallic or, or a plastic bead so it's not super smooth so this is a perfect tool to so like creating that sort of planes um all right I'm gonna use the pinch brush just to sharpen this edge here and in general the mouth and we can use the uh, I'm gonna use a custom brush the knife brush that I have and maybe a bit more resolution just to make sure that this is quite sharp there we go Alright, I think that's coming along nicely. We have plenty of time, so I can spend a bit more time on this guy just refining the expression a bit. Just because we have a yeah, we have time and we can still detail the head. On the actual head of the character, this is just a secondary thing. In fact it's gonna be pretty tiny and I'm not even sure that if it's gonna work <laughs> or not.
All right. I'm going to use the H polish again. Polish, I'm polishing some areas. All right. Uh, let's do a quick poly paint for this guy as well. And actually, let me adjust the, the proportions a little bit. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so yeah, let's do some poly paint. I think I'm gonna go for a bony type of color. I'm gonna use the skin brush, sorry, the skin shade four as a base and a fill object. And I'm gonna use a slightly kind of like dirty um, yellow with a soft brush, large soft brush, just to add a little bit of. Again, it's kind of like painting an ambient occlusion in a way, and that helps with the stylization, just to keep it simple. And just to variate the color a little bit. Cool. And we can then use the masking tools. So all of this was what we do, what we did for the, I think the first stream about these guys, so two streams ago, um, we'd use quite a few of these things. I'm gonna click on mask by smoothness, um, let's try mask um, peaks and valleys. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Just playing around with the range, and maybe we can blur the mask or or sharpen it actually. Yeah, so we have that ni nice, interesting pattern. I just turned off the symmetry off. We can hide the mask, and then maybe use like a lighter color, like so. So I'm just gonna go uh, like a little bit randomly, like so. And that's just to variate that color a little bit. And because I'm not using symmetry and I'm just targeting different areas, we get a, you know, we, we have a bit of a symmetry in that sense, right? Clear that mask. I'm gonna use the mask by cavity. And that would allow me to target certain areas that I can darken. So let's go ahead and do that. Invert the mask maybe. Actually, and maybe blur a little bit, right? And then I'm can I can use a darker, maybe like a blue color. Now that's too blue. And enable symmetry. So I can just paint those areas. Right, let's clear the mask. Let's go for a pure black, actually. All right. So I think, again, <laughs> as a prop, this one, this one works. Um, it's gonna refine this a bit more. But yeah, as a prop, this works. It's not gonna be the main character or anything. So I don't wanna spend a lot more time on this thing. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get out of solo mode. <laughs> Let me just do something to check um, the consistency of all of this in, of the, in the design. So what do I have the head? So head, <laughs> right? So you can interchange these characters. Uh, but now nah, this one is, I'm gonna duplicate it, put it in the originals, and I'm gonna take that one, scale it like so, and that's gonna be the buckle. In fact, let's just go and have, I'm gonna flatten this a bit and use the bend arc deformer just to give it a bit more shape like so, and from the top as well. So I'm gonna use this other one like that. Um, you can change the the range of that curvature with the, the with the white cone. So uh, I kind of like that, but you can just do, you know, this sort of thing. I like that. So I'm gonna place it.
So this is what I'm saying. It's just a, a little prop. <laughs> so it's not going to be that visible. Let's see how that works. All right, that looks all right. Um, I'm gonna select the what would be the belt and use the move brush. Actually, the move topological with Aki curve, and let's just fix the the intersections and all of that. All right, so all we have left to do with this asset that we built is go ahead and use the standard brush and maybe use a different color. Just to add some poly paint. And perhaps a lighter, lighter color like this around this area maybe. I think that works. Um, yeah, so I think that works. And what we can do to emphasize kind of like the difference between the top and bottom, as if the character actually had some pants, is to do a mask on the body. So I'm going to select the body, which I have selected. Yep. And I'm going to use the mask lasso with symmetry. And I'm going to hold control and drag like so just to mask that area. Right, and of course the lasso just does it by camera. So I'm gonna mask these areas that I got masked accidentally. Hold the Alt key to unmask, and hopefully that doesn't change things. Right, and the same thing goes for the rest. So mask that. So essentially just adding a mask. That's all. Right, um, but I can go ahead and invert that mask. I'm gonna go to the masking palette. And I'm gonna hide that mask, so the mask is still there. But I, I like to, when I'm doing these type of things with polypaint, I like to see the real contribution of polypaint rather than just the mask. So I can use maybe a, again a darker color or maybe this type of green, just to darken that area a bit more. So you see, because I have that mask, that inverted mask, I, I can only paint these areas. So really, it's just making like some darker pants. <laughs> um, and now I can invert that, the mask, and I can do the same thing for this area. So I can go with like, you know, more like these brown tones. A little bit. Invert the mask again. Um, I think I went too dark with this, so just brightening it up um, with color. Let's clear that mask, and there we go. So now it feels more like you know there is a there's a belt in there. Now looking at this now from the distance, the the details they sort of like they're I don't know they're they're lost a little bit. So I'm gonna select that this this thing Hang on. there we go um, and I'm gonna use I'm gonna try a different color maybe just a, a darker brown I think that works a bit better And I'm just going to target these tiny little flicks, curly things, with a um, bit of a green color. So it's a lot of back and forth with these things. 
but it's important to to be able to judge that um let's see if it works again it's going to be pretty tiny the the fact that the that this skull is this color makes it you know makes it or well, makes it pop in a way so you can identify where it is um but yeah i think i think that works let's go ahead and work on the face we have about 30 odd minutes um to do some some designs here Let's have a look. Hi, Javin. How you doing? Um, can I use radial symmetry and mirror at the same time when painting eyes? Uh, no. So the radial symmetry is just a mode of the symmetry. So you either use radial symmetry or use the normal symmetry, like kind of like mirror symmetry. Uh, what you can do is for the eyes specifically you can work on one eye and then mirror it that's the easiest way um yeah i think that's the easiest way but you cannot have like two radial symmetries if that makes sense uh, another question do you see apps like character creator replacing character modeling in zbrush uh nah definitely not um, the, oh, that reminds, reminds me of something, in, just in case that you haven't seen it. Like, if you go to our station now, um, so, I, I, well, this thing was released a couple of days ago. It's um, it's a course that I, that I built using ZBrush and Character Creator. So, uh, for those who don't know about Character Creator, that's what Jevin was mentioning. So if you go into this um, creature prototyping for production is, yeah, it's just a, a, a course that I put together and it's in our station learning. So if you have the, the pro account, you can just watch the whole thing. So I take you through the entire set of um, tools and how to use that in combination with ZBrush. So it's a great add-on, a great tool, um, you know, to, to work with ZBrush, but I don't see that uh, replacing ZBrush at all anytime soon uh, it's a it's a great starting point and i use it quite a bit for like certain characters and certain things that um even for client work uh, as a starting point but never like it, it, yeah it, it definitely needs to go through a process of the of refining um but it's a, it's a really cool tool to prototype stuff and that's what the course that i have in our station is all about is basically a a prototyping for production so it allows you to come up with something that you can send to the director and say here it is uh, here's is the idea here's the concept um, and you can start iterating a lot faster and create a lot of variants and start working on the production of that character and if the you know the director say oh i don't like the proportions or i like the i like the face but um the arms are like too skinny like those type of things it's super easy to go to that software back uh, between ZBrush and Character Creator and, and tweak those things. And then again, it's just about iterating and, and prototyping to uh, go back and forth and, and refine that idea. So that's what the, the course is, is about. It's just getting into the, you know, some of the tools that, that I, I would use. Uh, again, it's a slightly different process, a slightly different workflow. Um, and then you can use, because it comes with a rig, if you maintain that rig in Character Creator, you can do, um, animations and uh, all sorts of things that are already using that rig so that's pretty cool uh will you be using uh, hang on yeah will you be using two other c spheres for the eyes separately um i currently have two things in there for the eyes which you know i might not even use at the end um yeah but i don't know maybe i love the red oh cool Glad you like it. Awesome. Um, all right. So let's go. Let's go ahead and tweak this a bit more. I'm going to start with this thing here at the top, uh, maybe without the IQ curve. Again, I'm just going to try to variate this because it was like super. It looks too manufactured. And these these type of things are pretty subtle, um, 
So like if you look at the, let's say the previous stream and then you look at this one uh, in terms of the what the result is, you might not even pick on these things that I'm doing, but they're really important <laughs> as an overall thing for design. Uh, so I'm gonna use the trim dynamic actually. And I'm gonna turn on my sculpting material. Let's just use the basic one. I'm gonna turn off polypaint for that bit. And I'm just gonna use the trim dynamic to just flatten some of these things. And this is still a yeah, this is still a dynamic object. Right, and then I can take my knife brush. Let's just do a redyna mesh of this, maybe with a bit more resolution. Uh, hang on. Yeah, I lost the. Let's not do the right the redyna mesh now. Just want to keep the poly paint for now. So I'm just going to variate these lines. So I flatten those with the trim dynamic. And now I'm just trying to rebuild them in a, in a way, but more manually, so that it creates yeah, a more interesting and more organic shape. All righty. I mean, it's not crazy different, but being able to manually adjust this um, I quite like it as well. It's, it's just part of my process, I guess, uh, to, to be able to do these things. And in fact, we can, I mean, I want to keep it stylized. So I was going to say that I could bring one of the, the brushes that I have, but let's see. Um, I'm going to go to my brushes. And I'm going to use one of the digital clay ones that I quite like. Um, I'm gonna use these flicks. So this is another thing, right? Um, like if you ever, if you're interested in, in getting one of the brushes pack that I have online and, and all of that, um, I use them for very specific things and that's really the way that I build them. So this specific set of brushes that I'm using or this brush that I'm using is part of the clay brushes pack. Uh, so when I build it, I was building it thinking this is how I'm going to use it for clay, um, you know, creating that sort of clay look and all of that. But, you know, when you, when you it's like any other brush, right? Once once you start playing around with it, you can say, you can think, okay, this actually could be really, really useful for s these type of things. So like this flicks in, the, in a pumpkin. So it doesn't have to be used just for that, just for clay for the clay look, right? Um, so, yeah, just wanna <laughs> wanna say that if you ever get one of those brushes, just don't don't limit yourself to the way that uh, or the the reason they were created for uh, or the the aim that these brushes had uh, when they were created. Just feel free to try a, a few, few different things. Like in this case, um, just to give you another example. Uh, for a different brush, let's see the rocks, the rock pack. Um, I can use this this layer, the crack layer. Um, this one actually is not gonna work. This one is the one that I meant, right? And this one, when you do multiple sort of strokes um, around the same area, it just creates that sharp edge that you can sort of see that I'm generating there. Um, and that's just to add a bit more of a texture, like rather quick as a concept is quite easy. All right, but I wanna keep it stylized for the most part. So I think that that works, um, I'm gonna, Go ahead and update this poly paint by going to uh, hang on, masking 
smoothness or not smoothness cavity I think that works not cavity uh, I use peaks and valley sorry let's use smoothness as well and cavity as well invert that blur just a quick refinement of the of the poly paint clear that mask um, so yeah that's that's looking all right I'm gonna select the the head now and let's just for fun let's use the same thing um, yeah let's use that one uh, what I'll do is I'm gonna duplicate this head just so that I can show you the difference before and after and I'm gonna use the symmetry uh, that I've been using with a poly paint go into solo mode and I'm gonna also enable back face masking so I'm gonna use this uh, before I do that actually that's what I wanted to show you uh, before I start ad adding details to this I can store a morph target and then I can be a little bit more loose as to how you know how I add these details and I'm just using this custom brush because of the time that we have but you could do you can achieve the same thing with a clay brush or a clay tube brush and get the same thing or just a, an alpha really it's just to speed up a little bit of the the process and ultimately that's what the the brushes that I customize and that I build are for or that are meant for uh, just to be able to work a little bit faster and and get interesting and detailed results a lot faster really all right. Right. So that's that's all right. I'm going to go ahead and use the trim dynamic now. And I'm just going to flatten certain bits. And this process is basically to uh, to remove some of the the repetition of that alpha because the, the brush that I use has a, a particular alpha it has some settings but at the end of the day it's been most of the these details are driven by an alpha that I created so uh, just adding this sort of flattening with the trim dynamic helps to to avoid that repetition a little bit uh, but that's that's it right now we can go ahead and bring in the morph brush uh, because we stored a morph target and we can sort of soften all of that uh, but we do it manually with a with a morph brush and that's gonna give you a lot of control especially over the placement of the details you can even combine these with um, with a layer well, with sculpting layers really and the sculpting layers will give you the the opportunity to sort of um, control the intensity of the details so with a with a layer you can just you know reduce the intensity overall uh, but then with this brush and if you save a morph target you can change the the placement or, or reduce the intensity even a specific area so I like to use those in combination the saving a morph target and a sculpting brush a sculpting brush a sculpting layer and that's about it so that's that's alright let's go ahead and do same thing gonna bring in another brush um, I'm just gonna try something else. Oh, I did say that I was gonna show you how to build your brush, so let's just do that. Let's build a brush. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna use a clay brush, and I'm gonna start maybe without symmetry. I'm gonna start here at the back. Um, so let me just smooth this a bit more. And what I'll do to start creating a brush, uh, and this is just since I think 2020 with the update of Cirrus 2020 this one is like super super easy to do really really easy um, so I'll show you how to do that
is the best in the best as the post belt the belt buckle sorry i'm not i'm not i'm not following what the question is um do you sometimes just leave the mesh as dynamesh for illustration renders or do you always remesh oh no depending on what i need but this one could stay as a dynamesh i think this is a dynamesh yeah um if what i need is just a concept and this allows me to do it and i'm using polypane absolutely you can use um dynamesh and just leave it as a dynamesh uh sometimes if i want to go for example uh, take this all the way through you know texturing with uh, with substance painter and all of that uh, that's when I need to re remesh in order to get a, you know, a better geometry to do a UV mapping and all of that. But yeah, it it depends on on the concept. So to build that brush, all we have to do, or, or build a new brush, all we have to do is hold the Control key, and click on the current state of the undo history. So this orange bit here, right? So as soon as I hold Control and click, you see it just generates that white extra bar in there. And that's telling Sievers that we want to, like, it's almost like having, a storing a morph target, right? So what I'm going to do now is just work on a specific detail. So it's one of those sort of like moles or bumps that the pumpkins have. Right, and I and I can use any brush. I can use a damp standard brush, just to sharpen some of these edges. In this case, it's gonna be low res because of the, you know, the low res of the pumpkin. But uh, you can have it in a, you know, with more resolution. I'll show you how in a second. Uh, I can use the standard brush. Oops, standard brush. I'm gonna reset that standard brush. And just do that, right? So that's one, one simple, one simple detail. Um, and you see, as I started adding those, those things around and creating that detail, all of these are brush strokes and things that I have in my timeline now. So because I saved the original point here without any of these details, in a way, saving a morph target. I can tell Sivers to, from this point that I saved, to what I just did, uh, to extract that that set of details and create a brush out of it. So it's super simple. I'm gonna click on this the brush extractor, the brush, the X, the extractor drag rate brush, um, which you can find um, here. Right. Uh, I'm gonna press the G key. Uh, that's also what I have in here so i have a custom button for that in case i don't have access to my keyboard but i do so click on g it just change to this cursor and i can click and drag and basically whatever i grab from this point or as soon as i let go sirius is going to analyze the difference between that point that i save with the control in the timeline and the new point and it generates a an alpha so There it is my, the, there is the new alpha. And with this brush, I can just go ahead and do this now. So it's a super simple thing to do. And of course, this is just an alpha on a brush so I can reduce the, the intensity and start doing this. And this is just one simple detail, right? Uh, I can make the same thing for multiple things. And of course, I can variate the the size of it as I drag things along. So that's how easy it is to create your own custom brushes with details and stuff like that in Sirush. Very, very handy. And of course, at this point, I'm just adding those details without symmetry just to make it more interesting. Uh, 
All right. Um, let me repeat the process with maybe some scratches. Um, actually, before I do that, let's. I mean, th it's a pretty simple thing, and it looks a lot more detailed just by doing that with a single alpha, really. Um, hang on. Will th will there be a Halloween sale on your Severs Guide website? Um, I I might do one, but uh, yeah, for the for the brushes, you mean? Maybe. Um, don't know yet. <laughs> I'm I'm preoccupied preoccupied with um with the with the courses at the moment, as in making sure that all the new students have um the proper welcome and all of that. But I I might just do that because I have to do it manually. Uh, do you have your s do you save your file as a project file to retain the history of the tools? Not really, unless I'm doing something for um, a specific yeah a production i i tend to rather than saving the undo histories um i tend to just duplicate mesh and that's why i always keep that original folder and when i'm doing something that is going to drastically change things i just duplicate it and continue working so it will be saved in the in the c2 um do you not use concept r as a reference um not really um, to do specific things, but I do collect heaps, heaps, heaps of references to do my own concept art. Um, the reason I don't use much concept art as reference is because that's precisely what I like to do. Like, I like to create stuff, like make up my own designs and make my own concepts. Uh, but I do use heaps of references to, to come up with the, with the designs. Um, so what I was going to say is that, because we have about 15 minutes, I'm going to select my standard brush, reset it. And I'm going to tweak that brush again, just to show you another simple method to um, turn your your brushes into something else. I'm going to use an alpha, um, like alpha, um, probably alpha 8, with a larger brush size. Yep. And I'm going to change the stroke to spray. And I'm going to here go here at the back, just to see what it does. So, yeah, I think this alpha is too strong. I'm going to change the alpha to alpha 41. Um, almost there, 44, smaller one. And now, in between, 42. Right, so this is what I want. I want to generate like these bumps. Um, so I'm going to show you that um, sort of workflow that I mentioned with the sculpting layers. Uh, but I also want to reduce the intensity a tiny bit. Something like that should be fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and enable the layers so or, or create a new layer. Uh, but before I create a new layer, I'm going to delete the current, uh, the current morph target. Uh, I'm going to store a new morph target. So now Sirius remember the entire um, current state of this model. I'm going to click on new layer. There we go. And I can start maybe with the symmetry as well. I can be a bit more loose about how I apply this. So I'm just going to add this very quickly just to add surface noise in a, in a way. To the pumpkin. All right. So you see, it, it just adds details, but it doesn't look great at the moment because it's you know it's pretty it's pretty rough pass anyway all right let's say that we are <laughs> sort of happy with this uh, but we now have a sculpting layer and we have a morph target so the sculpting layer allows you to tweak the intensity of the details overall so i can just do that and you see it just reduces the intensity like so so i think point point five is okay so again the, the layer is great for that it just reduces the intensity uh, but then you have the morph target and you can replace it or, or change the the placement of all of these things so what i'll do is i'm going to bake that layer you don't have to but i 
you know, in this process I usually do. You don't have to bake the layer. Um, you, in fact, you can just create a new layer and tweak. Let me just show you. New layer and then bring in the morph target. Turn off symmetry. And then start refining the placement of just these bumps that, um, that we created. So maybe around here, the mouth. Maybe here is going to be more evident. So I'm just using the morph, the, the morph brush to revert back to that state that we saved, but it's more manual and we can place or leave some some of the, the details in some areas or just remove them by, by doing this. Uh, and this is done in a separate layer. So if I stop recording, turn this on and off, you'll see at the bottom what is happening. So these two layers, one is giving you the overall look, the other one is giving you control about like how to place it and where to place them and the intensity. Uh, but then at the end I can just bake those things. Um, okay, so let's do one more brush just to wrap it up. I'm going to select the standard, no, let's send, select the damp standard brush or in fact this knife brush. And let's go here at the back and I'm going to go ahead and hold control and click on my timeline just to save a new target. I'm just going to do a, a simple scratch like that. Use the pinch brush just to sharpen the beginning and the end a little bit. Again, just to create a sort of stylized sort of crack. <laughs> um, and use the trim dynamic just to add a bit of indentation, but sh you know, flatting it at the same time. So a simple quick scratch that we can turn into another brush. So I'm going to click the extractor, G, click and drag. I'm going to try to align that sort of center line with the actual scratch. And that's it. We now have a new brush that we can add. So super, super easy. So maybe we can add that around the mouth. So I would imagine that, you know, if this was a creature type of thing that was carved by someone, there would be some scratches or cuts or mistakes that happen around this area more than anything, or the area that you sort of cut the eyes and the and the mouth and all of that. So that's what I'm trying to achieve here. Um I'm going to do a couple more, just more randomly placing here. Right. Um, but again, if you think that maybe this is too much, that I went overboard because we had, um, you know, previously saved morph target, it's the same thing, go with the morph brush and then just tweak some of these or remove. Maybe I want to cut through this one like so. So again, it's a back and forth, it's a simple sculpting sort of process, but um, I think it's it's all right. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy with this. Let's turn back on the polypane, right? And what I can do is go to the skin brush. Let's go to the standard brush, reset that brush and use the RGB. And we can go back to the, where are we? Masking, masking, mask by cavity or mask by smoothness actually. I'm going to blur that mask a bit. All right. And just want to see, maybe add a bit of darker oranges at the top. And this is just to refine, to refine the polypane. 
um, this uh, actually let me clear the mask this sort of like dotted points in here they might be too strong for example um, so what you can do is hold the shift key make sure that the shift key has RGB enabled but you can disable Z add so you won't change the the volumes but you can sort of blur that sort of transition of colors so it's you can use the smooth brush sorry yeah the smooth brush as um kind of like as much or blur brush for the for the RGB properties of your model or like the poly paint all right so I'm gonna use the peaks and valley again and I'm gonna play with the coverage and the range and maybe the smoothness actually yeah Mm, it's not giving me the result that I want uh, just with this mask so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and paint it manually and I just want to add some greens to the to the pumpkin so I'm gonna go into solo mode and I'm gonna paint a mask let's turn off poly paint so that we see um, we see the mask a little bit better so I'm gonna hold control uh, sorry mask pen hold control uh, and what I'll do is Maybe with a smaller brush size. Um, I actually have a custom mask brush that is a bit sharper, so I'm going to use that. Not this one. So this um, this sharp mask is actually um, all I did was just change some of the settings on the mask brush just to get a very very sharp mask that I can use um, and I just save it as a different masking brush and and you can get this one by the way so this one is is very simple but it's super useful and that's why I included that in the um, in the starter kit for the ultimate ZBrush guide course so that's another course that is hopefully coming up next month if everything goes well and that's a uh, you know slightly different from the extra mile that is currently open uh, because these the ultimate zbrush guide whoops the ultimate zbrush guides is just about zbrush so it's just taking you know someone that has no idea about zbrush or that has been struggling with zbrush for a while and taking them all the way to you know, showing them all the processes. It's a very systematic, step-by-step -step approach. But um, anyway, <laughs> this this brush comes with the starter kit that you can get for free if you go to the to the website. Um, I'll put a link in just a second to wrap it up. But again, it's a it's it's one of those brushes that is super simple. Like th the changes that I made are very simple. But it, having it as a, as a separate tool, as a thing that you can just load at any time makes it really, really, really handy. All right, so what I want, what I'm doing with this is just to add some of that breaking, breaking the, the orangey sort of pumpkin. And I don't know, I had some references of like these pumpkins that had like green colors and it look a lot more interesting than just a single color. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, now that I have placed that mask, I'm going to blur it by clicking on it. Like that. All right. And let's bring in the poly paint again. Invert the mask hide it so that I don't see it and one thing we can do instead of using polypaint which you can totally do is go to uh, adjust color so Sirius will remember that mask that you manually place when you click on mask this and uh, mask by color adjust color sorry and yeah here is the mask so what we can do is hide it and just use the hue saturation to change the, the hue 
So we can place with that, change the intensity, maybe turn it down a bit. Add a bit of contrast. Darken it and change the saturation. Maybe that's too green. Uh, sorry, too blue. Like so. And maybe you can add a tint if you want of a yellowish green tone. Like that. Um, but that's just a, a quick way to change the, the polypane. Let's click OK. Clear the mask. And now we have those extra bits of color, um, which I think they're pretty cool. And that's about it. I think I'm going to leave it here and just leave this character there. Uh, of course, you know, you can tweak things like, uh, well, for, for one, you can just re, um, retopologize all of this, and this would be a, a character you could use um, in an animation, that sort of thing. But um, in general, I think I'm, I'm happy with this. As a, as a quick concept for a character, I, I think it sort of fits within the, um, the, the world of the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas type of thing. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that works. Uh, let me just show you, just to wrap it up again, the where you can get this brush. Right, so this is the the extra mile that I mentioned. Again, that is uh, is closing this week. So I think Friday, if I'm not mistaken, Friday Australia is uh, my my time. Um, I'll be closing the the extra mile. So you have time to to join till then. Uh, but if you go to courses here at the top, or even if you go here in the in the uh, homepage of the extra of the three three D concept artist website. You can click on the Ultimate Seabrush Guide course, this one here, and that would open up the Studded Kit. So again, this is something that is hopefully coming next week if everything goes well. Um, I've been working on it for a while. I just again putting the the last the last touches on it. Um, so yeah, that's where you can go. I'm gonna share that link. go. Uh, so if you go scroll down, this is the starter kit. You get um, a custom ZBrush UI that I, I found to be quite useful. Um, a set of brushes, including the one that I just showed you, the, the sharp mask, uh, with the, which is this one. Um, the, Seabrush, the the ultimate ZBrush guide uh, cheat sheet, which gives you the all the shortcuts and everything that you need, uh, plus some materials. So um, yeah, just go here, put your name and email, and, and uh, you'll get an email with the with the download link uh, to get this starter kit, um, and in the in the brushes, there are ten brushes. The brush that I use today, uh, that sharp mask, is in here, and that's about it, really. Cool. All right, no worries, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, yeah, I'm gonna leave it here, and if you have any other questions about, you know, anything in general, or if you you have some um, specific questions about the the extra mile uh, today I'm gonna start a, a Q&A on on Instagram to answer any question that I can uh, if you're not sure about like certain things about the course <laughs> again I don't want you to miss this opportunity if you want to join all right have a good one guys and I'll see you 